this is a video uh, blog of my experience with the Ibogaine ceremony that I undertook this week. It's Thursday the 12th, um, the Ibogaine experience started on Monday the 9th and went through to Wednesday the 11th. The process started on the 9th by waking with no food, uh, water, uh, I think juice was accepted as things to in take but um that that was it just water really it was a fasting day the experience took place in holland um the house it was a house that the uh, ceremony took place in it was a beautiful light open house perfectly designed for eight participants to undergo a healing process through a ceremony using the ibogaine as the main um, thing that was ingested. The ibogaine is the, the roots of a plant that have to be 15, 20 years old before they're effective and then the roots are um, desiccated where the outside of the bark of the root was what was ingested. Now we, we were, I'll talk about that in a minute. Let's talk about the house. We had um, dormitories upstairs, one for girls, one for boys. There were four of each, four boys and four girls, which I, I quite like. I like symmetry in numbers, eight number being infinity. It was, it was lovely. Um, then we, so we arrived at the house at about four o'clock, having had nowhere, nothing to drink, nothing to. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to carry on. I need, I've been erasing it and starting erasing it and starting. I'm going to stay with it. I can do this. So we had, we didn't have, we only had water to drink. And we arrived at the house and we all sat around. And once everyone around, we all sat around the, this main table, this little table. There's very low benches on the floor, very comfortable cushions. And we talked about our life stories, our names, our problems, what we thought were our addictions, or, or things that we wanted to address within ourselves that we, we seemed unable to change on our own. And we talked about our hobbies, so that was interesting, we got to know everyone. Then we, we went for a little walk around the countryside just to sort of ground ourselves, that was beautiful. Holland is so green and um, flat but green, so much nature compared to you know the built up houses where I live. So that was pleasant. It was farmland, agricultural land, so that was quite nice. It felt like there was a close connection to the earth there. I am a bit of a hippie, it's true, a very spiritual person. Um, but that side, so we came back from then and we all sat around. We, we got changed into our clothes that we were going to wear. The ceremony takes place in white. The initiate wears white in the process um, and we all sat around in another circle and if we had anything to offer to the altar we gave it to the altar then um, we pulled um, a card each like an oracle card um, what was mine let me read mine out it made me make me made me weak i consciously choose to enjoy the game on earth this is so appropriate for me and the next bit as well Many eons ago, you heard fascinating stories about a wonderful place with freedom of choice, games between opposites, and plenty of talented players. With great curiosity, you flew into Earth and joined the big show. You brought unique knowledge with you that now wants to break free. Link to your destiny, my dear, with love, in God. So that was lovely. Um, well, my mum was in the experience, and her partner was in the experience. The only reason we were there was to go with Arla's son who has addiction problems but unfortunately he wasn't quite ready at that moment and um, he didn't come but I'm very grateful for him for being the initiator of that experience because without him I wouldn't have been there and I wouldn't feel as amazing as I do now. I didn't feel amazing before. I may get a bit weepy, I'm, I'm still a weepy person. But that's okay, I'm an emotional, highly sensitive person. There is nothing wrong with that. 
So after we pulled our cards and we sat around and we invited the um, Iboga spirit in by playing the musical instruments from the area and that was really pleasant. Then we um, all had our first test dose to make sure we weren't allergic. Um, there are different ways of taking the ibogaine. There are how there are crystalline versions. This was a proper root bark, but rather than having strips like you would do in an original ceremony, you have to chew and chew in front of the shaman. We um, were able to have these little tiny glass bowls full of this powder, which it was it was challenging. It makes me feel a bit sick thinking about it now, even though I wasn't sick. But it's that that. That feeling is there. The, um, it's a very, it was very fibrous, tasted a bit licorice-y. And the idea was you wanted to get it in your mouth, masticate it around with a little tiny bit of water and try and swallow it down. So I think I did my bowl in about three. I kept quite a lot of it in my mouth. It made my mouth go a bit tingly, like, like licorice would. Or, um, it wasn't pleasant, but it wasn't unpleasant. It, it was just different. It was like taking a herbal medicine tincture. That they're, they're not often don't taste like lovely like our Western medicines. They're not full of sugar. They're just natural. So it's a different taste. So then we we all sat around and I did a little bit more while we were sort of letting that happen. So about half an hour after taking the powder, we all got our beds out and we all lay down on our beds in the room. Four beds, uh, all s separated off. Um, we were we were told about the experience about the things that were likely to happen as well before we took the powder. You know, we were prepared. It was very well prepared, and I felt very comfortable about the experience. I was worried about perhaps the fact that I might poo myself. You know, um, but that was that was a. I learned later on that that was just an expectation and that I expectations don't serve me. So. Every single part of the experience created the whole of it in a very profound way. Other people's experiences were my own, etc. Then we did a meditation while we waited, just to still waited to see that nobody was allergic. So after about an hour and a quarter, maybe, of the first dose, it was decided that we were all okay with our first dose. We were weighed as well to know what sort of body weight we should be given, what sort of um, powder to body weight we should be given, ground up root powder, that we should be given, um, I weighed the same as my mum, 55 kilos, which surprised me. So the second dose, we got into bed and we took the second dose, I was already starting to feel the again at that point, but in a very subtle, warm, quite exciting way nothing like when it was become a little bit later which was just relentless the second dose that i had came shortly after that and again it was in a powder form it was very hard to get down but it didn't make me want to vomit it was just dry and i didn't want to drink too much water because um i think the ibogaine is, is trying to keep the ibogaine in the, in the blood rather than to take it straight down to the stomach so the more liquids you added, the quicker it would go to the stomach. And the stomach is very good at rejecting things. Especially if you've got a delicate tummy like mine. No, but I was very good and I didn't drink too much water. My mouth got incredibly dry and then the second dose started to work. And it, it was just intense. The candles flickering in the room created all sorts of patterns in my eyes. It was like being on a on a roller coaster of ups and downs of incessant craziness of the limited the unlimited abundance of the universal mind it it was phenomenal but that there are expectations that we have of ourselves during these processes and I could hear these these different voices from myself my different voices throughout time that I've had these very self critical nasty voices that, that I I went into this process because I carry this very self-deprecating voice which is horrible was horrible it's not there at the moment it was a horrible voice um, it is something I had adopted when I was young that 
enabled me to survive at some point, but it was no longer necessary. I mean, maybe if I if past lives, maybe I have done, I probably have done horrible things in past lives, but I don't think it's that. It's just a coping mechanism in this, and it stopped me from living my life fully. That gave me a very low self-esteem. However, I don't have a low self-esteem right now. So the experience is fast, relentless, um, un you get unbelievably hot. Like you feel like you're about to combust. You, you would not believe how hot you get. It's like you detox from every pore, sweat out all these poisons that have been stored in your body, whether they're negative poisons of thoughts or emotions, every single bad thought you've had, you literally can sweat it out through oh that's how it feels that's how it feels at the time and that was you know that was my experience if you're going to ever take this experience your experience may be different you know everyone's experiences are different um so i had things that i wanted to work on and i i realized when i was on my in my experience that if i visualize myself in a situation um, the negative voices would come and say, so I'm not very good at performing on stage, everybody else is happy with me, but my expectations of myself are never met. And it, it's not kind of about me when you're performing, it's about sharing with other people. So it's not, your expectation shouldn't really count on some level. But anyway, I could see myself performing on stage and I could, any negative thoughts that could come up, I was able just to like, it's like I had a magic wand or like I could just tap them and they would just sprinkle and disappear. And it, the difference of knowing and really knowing, I have all this knowledge, all these things under my belt that I've learned throughout my life, all these different disciplines and practices and, and um, Abraham and Eckhart Tolle and you know it's just incessantly looking for the next thing for the next thing for the next thing it's like walking the walk talking the talk and walking the walk the ibogaine helped me to switch from knowing and truly knowing i had the, the, the best one of the nicest things was the silly billy voice um i have this really nasty voice had this really nasty voice that would say yeah yeah, yeah you've done that wrong you're stupid you're bad you're really crap you're so bad, but what do you expect? You deserve everything you can get. But during my experiences with the Ibogaine, I had, like, I would have a negative thought, and then this voice would go, well, why are you thinking like that? You're just a silly billy. Be like this tinkly fairy voice, just a silly billy. And I'd go, oh, yeah, you're right, I'm a silly billy. And it would make me laugh out loud, or smile. I could feel my smile was so expansive on my face. So all, all these things, all these different things in my life, I could just see them as like, well, yeah, but I don't need that. I don't need to feel that. Why am I doing that? So I, I lost a lot of, I lost a lot of baggage of things that I've carried for a long time. It's an uncomfortable experience. You can't, you're asleep, but you're awake. You can't get comfortable. So you lie like this, lie like that, lie like that. Pulling the covers over you, pulling the covers off, pulling the covers on, you get hot. Going to the toilet is difficult. You're very wobbly, very disorientated. I should say that I think every hour or two hours, maybe, the next dose comes along. And then the next dose is there and you look over and there's a little bowl and you're like, oh, there's a bowl. Um, I think I did five doses in all. Um, and at that point, I realised that that was probably enough. Five is my magic number. It felt really good to stop there. Also, I thought if I did any more, maybe I wouldn't, I would never come back. Because I had all these expectations of going down these wormholes and, and meeting profound and, you know, but I actually, I met myself. And I'm profound. And I have all these wormholes and I can be anything I want. And I've known these things, but I've never known them. Because there's always been parts of me that have got in the way, but not anymore. Uh, there, uh, I mean, I put music on at one point. 
Um, I sat next to the toilet. I'm a highly sensitive person. Not a good idea if you're a highly sensitive person and you're taking a substance like this, which just makes you super sensitive. Uh, I was right next to the toilet so I could hear every time someone went to the toilet and threw up, or every time someone went to the toilet and shat themselves, or every time anyone just went into the toilet. It, 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 to the point when I, I had to put my earphones on and my music, and I put on Gateways to Consciousness by Carminda, and it was absolutely astounding. The music was phenomenal. Oh, beautiful. So beautiful. Just... And with the music, I could travel all over and do all sorts of things. I could visit anyone. People were so real. If um, if I imagined my daughter, she would be in the room. So real. Like a... She wasn't there, but she was like a photocopy, but like a 3D photocopy. So she was pulsating. She was energetic, but she was real. And I could talk to her, and I talked to my mum during the process. Excuse me for a minute disgusting but I know but I know it's weird or just what I think um I said to my mum you all right mum she was like yeah I'm all right and it was just perfectly like we were talking to each other the conversation was as real as if we just had it so I thought if these things were as just real as I could have it I can work on parts of my body that you know I, I'm not in, in my rational state right now I can see that um yeah, obviously, if I had a broken leg, I couldn't go in at that point and fix my broken leg. But I felt like I could work at the parts of my illnesses on the on the disease, on the spiritual, on the different planes, not just on the physical. That I could go into these different levels of my existence, my spiritual, physical, um, emotional, etheric, astral, spiritual planes, and, and I could I could work on them on that level and help heal them a bit there. It felt like anything was possible, like I was, I could be the most powerful creator, that I am the most powerful creator, not more powerful than anyone else, but like I am as powerful as everyone else, that we're all profoundly powerful, and that we've been, we've been uh, misled, which we all kind of know on some level or another, that, that life isn't, has taken us away from, on some aspects of our reality. Uh, I could feel people in the room, that was interesting. If someone got up, I could feel them from the other side of the room, like they were standing next to me. I had waves of energy, like ripples when I moved and my eyes were open. Little tracers of, like, little sprites that would sort of twist around. Like, I could see the energy in the room, but it was where the light, the light had the most impact. So wherever there was light, it was lots of electric energy and, and, and information. We had these things called mind folds, and they're black with a gap like this much between your eye and the fold. So you can have your eyes open, um, but being pitch black. And that was interesting because you could see the room. You could see the room as it was. However, for me, it was okay, but... It, it it was very it was almost like a dimension I didn't really want to go to because uh, there were ferns in the room that weren't obviously there and there were eyes they weren't scary eyes they were like a secretive creature's eyes looking at me and like they would like follow me around um, and I would see things in the room but it'd all be quite dark and it was nice to be able to have the mindfold on and um, have your eyes shut and not have the candlelight flickering because the candlelight flickering just created too much for me of the of the light traces in my eyes and it made it very crazy and very continued blah blah it's like the strain of thought time went on forever it felt like it would never end like if you'd, if you'd be unconscious or conscious to drift off for a second it felt like You'd never been anywhere. I, it was just, it was, it was relentless. It was not a comfortable experience, but it was profoundly enlightening at the same time. So it was worth it. And whether I would do it again, I'm not sure. Maybe I'd like to. I'd like to think that I only ever do these things once. And I'd like. To, I do feel like I am so completely changed. I know. 
that I do not want to drink coffee. I do not want to drink alcohol. I do not want to do recreational drugs. I have this voice that came in the experience. Is this good for you? And if the voice said, yeah, then I would, I would explore the process any further. And if the voice said, nah, silly Billy, I would, I would let it go. And I feel like I've carried that back with me. Like I've detoxed of everything, that I have this clean slate, that when my brain is not, it, it, it has no major chemical influences. I mean, there are chemical influences, but none that I'm actually ingesting into my body and partaking to choose of that are knocking me out of kilter, that are giving me these highs, that then give me these lows. I feel so balanced. I would still um, probably, I don't want to smoke marijuana right now, but I think at some point in the future, that it probably, I, I don't think I have an addiction to those things. Although, I think that they would just open up those negative thought patterns again. I, I think that that's how they come in. They, they probably re-experience the trauma that you've, that you've like eradicated or released out of your brain. So, yeah, I don't know. We'll be interested. I think probably still do mushrooms at some point because um, they're natural and, and they're enlightening for me. I, I don't overdo them. I have very profound experiences on them. It's light. I'm not I, unbalanced from them. And today, so let's go to today and then I better stop because it's probably far too long. Today I woke up this morning and I leapt out of bed, kind of. And I came down the stairs and my mind was full of all these positive things. You're an amazing creator. You've got this wonderful day ahead of you. Look at the daylight. The time that, like time is not a problem. So this expansiveness that I experienced, the slowing down of time, but to be able to be aware of your mental chatter and how crazy it is, has given me an ability to exist within time and not feel time pressure. Now I know my experience is very fresh and how much of this will fade, I'm not sure. But at the moment, I don't have any issue with time. I mean, I've been up since seven. I feel like I've been awake for two days. I didn't finish my experience properly, so I am a bit skitty. I hope you're okay with this. So I didn't finish my experience properly because what we did was we took the Ibogaine capsules, they kept coming in the bowls until the daylight came. And then we all went into our dorms, so the girls in one and the boys in the other. And in our dorms, we spent what well, was a bit more restful sleep, but you could actually drift in and out of sleep a little bit more. It was still uncomfortable, it was still relentless, but about two, three o'clock the next day, this would be the Monday, Tuesday, sorry, I woke up, came downstairs, people were around, we, everyone was eating, talking about their experiences. Some people had taken a top-up dose, which I didn't realise I could have, would have been different. If I'd have realised it would have been different, I probably would have taken it. But however, I looked at it in the bowl and was like, <laughs> please make it stop. So that was interesting for, maybe I just know my limits. So some people were still not very well. Some people were on their extra doses. Um, yeah, and we sat around and we ate. We went, a couple of us went for another little walk. And then we came back and we all sort of went to bed about 7, 8 o'clock. And slept all the way through till 7 or 8 o'clock the next morning, which was a Wednesday morning. We all come downstairs. We all talked about our experiences. Um, and some people had experiences on all levels of existence. And other people just had physical if you smoke a lot of weed, I think, then you're less likely to experience um, visions and, and, and sort of transcendental travelling because that part of your brain has been damaged to some extent by the smoking of the weed. Not permanently, it's because you're constantly doing it. Uh, I, I had experiences on all levels. And then we all thanked each other and then we sort of all went home and we all, you know, we all hugged and we, we had more food. We went for another walk and we went home. Um, 
it was a truly profound experience one I'm extremely grateful for and I hope that this is interesting for you I am a little bit I'm aware of how long I've made it however I guess it's my blog my vlog my yeah my words so it doesn't really matter does it and if you know me I'd never have said that before thank you for listening